especially now you have to do a lot more and just be very transparent with yourself I remember telling you like I don't think I'm applying enough during one of our private Q&A's and you just kind of told me like you have to find the time and so I would come home from work and at least try to put in like two applications so consistency is very important everything on your framework as far as listening to Cyberwire, Darknet, checking all of those boxes is gonna make the transition and getting into the field a lot more easier. I think you give everyone the necessary tools that they need to break into this field. They just have to be able to do it and be honest with themselves on whether they're doing this. You can click a bunch of easy applies and you know, just be honest with yourself. Do you really feel that that's helping you? So. But all of all the tools and resources are there that you need if they take this course. Hey everybody, today's interview is gonna be with a lady named Khadija. She has a really interesting background. She decided to kind of make a career change and then she joined the cyber range as well as did a, a few other things and then ended up landing a really interesting cybersecurity role that required her to basically uh, move overseas. And she kind of talks about like what she did along the way and gives some tips and stuff. So I think it'll be really useful. So yeah, check it out. Hey everybody, my name is Josh Matakor. I'm a cybersecurity YouTuber and owner of the Cyber Range. And we have Khadija here, who is like a community member. And she went and found a nice, cool cybersecurity job and she agreed to come on and talk to us about it. So thanks so much for joining us today. No problem. Glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to have you. And if you don't mind, do you want to do like maybe a brief introduction of yourself and maybe what you were doing before you got this current role? Um, so yeah, my name's Khadija. I just got a role as a cybersecurity assurance analyst. Before I transitioned into cyber, I was a mechanical engineer for about two years. I worked at a mine and then I transitioned to a role at Empire Cat for about six months before I got my first government contract role. So. Oh, wow. You're in mechanical engineering before. Yes. That's dope. Cool. And then for your, your current cybersecurity job, you said you're information assurance type stuff? Yeah. Do they give you like any details of like what you're going to be doing yet or you haven't? They just kind of give you like a high level? Um, I think I have like a general idea just from what I did before in my first role, which would probably be something centered around ATO and vulnerability management. So what's ATO? I actually don't know what that means. So like authority to operate just basically like compliance wise, you'll have like, or at least the last time I did it, we had an auditor come and assess all of our systems and we had to remediate everything by a certain due date. Um, Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And just to give people like some kind of idea of like how you built yourself up in order to get such a role. I'll talk about the cyber range a a bit in in a second, but do you have like any certifications or anything like this? Uh, I have my security plus. I have my CEH that I got through WGU. I took the CCNA per your recommendation. And then I have a cyber arc. Yeah. Cyber arc one and then Okta certified professional and then. That's it. Gotcha. So CyberArk and Okta, those are like, IA, are they IAM certs? Yeah. I, I've been having like a lot of people asking me about IAM these days, and I, I can't speak to it that much. Do you mind? Like, like what, I guess, why did you pick those certs? And like, how was the process of, of getting those? Um, so I did want to go into identity and access management because I kind of like heard it was like not that many people in it. So I started with the Okta Certified Professional first. It was a hands-on exam and probably like the most interesting exam I've took. Um, I really enjoyed that one. And then CyberArk, I just kind of told those, those, that's one of the more popular tools. So I ended up taking that one shortly after. But gotcha. Are those uh, expensive exams? By any chance, or do you remember how much? I think the Octa one was like a 50 buck promotion at the time. So oh, wow. it was like a no brainer for me. And then the CyberArk one was about 200 bucks. And oh. I think I like barely passed that one because it was like 40 <laughs> something questions. So not okay. a wide range to like get a lot wrong. I gotcha. That's cool. That's good to know. And so it, pretty much anyone, can anyone just like get Octas or some like weird requirement? Well, uh, there's no requirements for either. Okay. Cool. Yeah, sorry, that was like kind of random, but I, I didn't expect you had those and people always ask me about them. So <laughs> yeah, no problem. Cool. 
And then you were also a cyber range member. Did you go through like all the vulnerability management and threat hunt and like everything? Or did you just pick like one course or how was your experience, I guess, in the cyber range? I think for vulnerability management, I kind of skipped around a little bit because I had done it before and just kind of tried to see what I missed. But the threat hunting stuff, I went through all of that. Okay. Gotcha. Did you like when the there was a breach, did you like investigate that a bit on your own, like the cyber range breach? Oh yeah. The first one I actually ended up putting the report on my GitHub and that one was really fun. I think when nice. you initially put like the threat hunting scenario, the second one I think I think I was kind of like lost still and trying to figure mm-hmm. things out. So gotcha. cool. And then going back to your job, how can you talk about like the job hunt? process a bit like how many applications did you have to put out and like if you remember and how long was that whole like process to land your current job so i actually have my tracker up and i think it says 157 applications that i put in so not a lot it's it's not too bad i think i i think i got an interview request like three days after the application three or two or three days and Mm then i scheduled it the next day because I think I was off that day and then I had an offer maybe like two days later when I was at work yeah so it was really fast fast. yeah is that the only place that you had to interview at or did you have other interviews at all I had other interviews and then other people reach out I was ghosted for a few of them I had an interview for a system programmer role I think I sent you the description and I haven't heard any back from that one but I did do two two interviews with them and then I interviewed with another company for three times for a security analyst role and I think I got rejected like maybe last week that one took a while oh damn and it was another role I was supposed to interview for an identity and access management role but kind of got ghosted on that one a little bit later so gotcha gotcha but you got a, a decent one, so it worked out. Yes, it did. Cool. And I, I won't like talk about this too much and give away too many information, but you, you have to like do a, a pretty significant move for this job, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, how do you, how do you feel about that? This will be my second time, kind of moving away. I moved away to work at a mine when I was in engineering. Um, okay. This will be the first time I'm moving like this far away for such a long time because I don't think you're allowed to go home. I think before I was like seven on seven off. Uh, So it's going to be a little different in that aspect. I'm very close to my mom. So that's probably going to be like the hardest part. But uh, she's very supportive of it. So that helps. So but I'm excited. That's nice. That's good. Do you you don't have any, do you have any like long-term plans? Like I'm going to stay here for like two years and then do something else or are you just trying to kind of see how it goes like yeah day by day i'm trying okay. to see how it goes you know if i like it sounds good it's a, it's pretty exciting i haven't quite moved um, i'm like being cryptic i'm sorry to the audience but I, ha- I haven't quite moved like as far as you have like the worst i've done probably is i i went to hawaii and then japan but those are like not even like you know as as like you know as much impact i guess i don't know what i'm trying to say but yeah, yeah. that's that's cool yeah. How was like the, the interview process with your current job? Was, did they give you like a mix of technical and behavior? Like how, how was that? I kind of jotted down some of the questions that I could remember. <laughs> so okay. Oh, yeah. I think the first one was like your experience with RMF. And I think I focused on the last three, the assess, authorize, and monitor. Mm-hmm. And then artifacts for ATO. That's like you'll, you'll have different files that you're supposed to submit or when I was in my first role, we had to upload everything into a system called EMAS, which is just basically like a pretty decent way of tracking everything. So the auditor goes back in and approves it, the entire package. They asked me about Splunk and like Seam experience, and that's when I kind of like leverage your course and using Defender for Endpoint. Um, okay. They did ask about Stigs. I think I kind of like yeah. skipped over that part in your course because I had done some before in a previous role so and then they did ask me about like scan types but it was worded kind of weirdly so I had to like Mm -hmm. ask to clarify which was basically do you know what like a discovery scan is and how do you remediate vulnerabilities and also 
like if a coworker says you brought down a server, like what would you check? And then I think I answered something along the lines like audit logs and timestamps, and that's like exactly what they wanted to hear. So oh, nice, yeah, nice, that's cool. And then did you have just one big interview, or was it like like a bunch with the different people? Uh, it was two people. One I believe is my direct report, my manager. Mm-hmm. And I think they were, one's been there for maybe a year and the other's been like six months or so, but okay. it's just two people. Gotcha. Like they were like, they're like literally where you're going to. Um, I'm not sure where they are because I wasn't allowed to see their faces, but I, oh, really? yeah, I had to be on camera, but they weren't. Oh, <laughs> it was a little weird because, you know, trying to gauge, like if you're gauged a person, but they said I did really well. So that's, that's good. That's good. And I, I think it's good that you move because like a lot of people aren't even like willing to move. And but if you're willing to like really, really relocate, it can really speed up the time which you um, get a job. You you just have to like, you know, deal with those extra stuff about moving and all that. For sure. Are they going to help you with any of those like relocation or anything like this? Yeah. So they provided housing, which was like my biggest concern. And then I think it's like 750 pounds that they'll move for you. I don't know how you gauge that or if you just weigh everything in, but okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Yeah, we're like giving away the job type, talking about like Stig and like hiding their faces. And <laughs> all that. Yeah, a little but, bit. Yeah. Well, when you applied to this job, did you like, how did you do that? Did you just use quick apply on like LinkedIn or something? Or did you find the actual job posting or like, do you remember any of that? Yeah, so someone in the cyber range actually posted it, and oh, really? yeah, so I immediately like went to the link as they posted it and applied, and I think it was just kind of like a, a resume upload. So. Okay. It's, it's funny that you say this, because, okay, someone posted that to the cyber range, and then somebody else got like a job at the same place in the cyber range this is for you you already know this i guess yeah. but like the for the viewers like somebody else like applied and two people in the the community got like this i don't know if it's the same job but it's in the same like area right or something yeah he actually messaged me like right after i posted mine so it's like we got hired at the same place so that's so fu- funny is it this is it can you see the the person or is it like a, a different like org or something um, I think he's, we're, I think we're in this, I'm assuming we're in the same location, like exactly. Yeah. yeah so we'll probably that's, work together at some point. That's funny. That's funny. I hope the experience is there. I hope the experience there is good. Yeah. Damn. That's cool. Yeah. So I guess two, two more questions, like one kind of about the cyber range and then one not having anything to do with that. Okay. For for people like watching this who are like considering to do the cyber range, is there anything that you would recommend them to pay attention to, like any particular module or like, you know, the weekly meetings or anything that really helped you out a lot? I would say to someone trying to join, just sign up. I've actually had like a few people reach out to me a while ago asking if they should take your course. And I usually always tell them oh, really? like, yeah, I think like four people on LinkedIn messaged me. Um, But I usually like... Re- refer them to your YouTube videos and then since they're free. I think you teach in a way that's very beginner friendly, which is difficult to find. I know a lot of people complain to me about the price point, but I mean, for me, like $97 is like super cheap and that's probably as cheap as it gets. So, but I I would tell that person to pay attention to everything, especially if you're like just starting out because everything that you teach at some point, it's going to come back around or at least for me, it did. So don't skip over it like I did in certain parts. I did eventually (laughs) later back go through the vulnerability stuff again, Mm -hmm. but go through everything, do it all, follow the interview questions. Every time I interview for a position, I watch your 50 interview questions over and over again, just to get used to like articulating myself in the interview. So that's my recommendation. Cool, thanks. It's funny that you say it to like, go over everything because they, they literally it's they literally get asking you about stigs that's really funny to be honest <laughs> like in the in the interview because that i don't know i feel like that's not something that they will like always ask about because it's like really dod specific but that's like i don't know yeah thanks for that no problem and then as somebody who kind of went through career change from 
you know, mechanical engineer into cyber. There's probably a lot of people watching this who are like interested in getting into cybersecurity. Do you have like any kind of advice for them, like either mindset advice or something that you think helped them to like make their transition? My advice would be to, especially now you have to do a lot more and just be very transparent with yourself. I remember t telling you like, I don't think I'm applying enough during one of our private Q and A's. And you just kind of told me like, you have to find the time. And so I would come home from work and at least try to put in like two applications. So consistency is very important. Everything on your framework, as far as listening to Cyberware, Darknet, checking all of those boxes is going to make the transition and getting into the field a lot more easier. I think you give everyone the necessary tools that they need to break into this field. They just have to be able to do it and be honest with themselves on whether they're doing this you can click a bunch of easy applies and, you know, just be honest with yourself. Do you really feel that that's helping you? So, but all of, all the tools and resources are there that you need if they take this course. Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much. And the way you, you talk is like really calm and low key, but I can tell you like do a lot of stuff because you're like, oh yeah, I was a mechanical engineer. Oh, I went to a mine. Mm -hmm. But like, <laughs> that, yeah, I, yeah, I can tell you, you do a lot and that's like, you know, that's what it takes to like kind of get stuff in life because we're not, we're not trying to become like astronauts here. So like, you know, most people, you know, if they put in those like time and effort, which you're doing right, they can, they'll be able to, you know, get whatever they're after. But yeah, I, thanks so much for doing this interview. And I, I really like respect your execution because you, you've like done a lot and you've, you're probably going to have like a lot of cool experiences in the future. So thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it a lot. Glad to be here.